Hi, I'm Bill Ritchie, and I want to introduce you to a film I'm going to show, but first I want to tell you a little background history. This is a plate that I made when I was in Norway in 1969 working with Rolf Nesch, and that's what this video is about. It's my tribute to Rolf Nesch, my homage tape. And this is a print that I made from the plate that Rolf Nesch showed me how to make. In the mail a few days ago, I got a very nice surprise. It doesn't look like much maybe on this video, but it's a souvenir. It's an artifact from Rolf Nesch's studio. It went into the making of this print by Rolf Nesch, one of the catalogs from his last shows. And if you look closely, you can see the shape here, which is the bird's wing, is this same piece. Of course, the scale is different because this is a reduced print, but that was very nice. That came from Bent Torjusen. She's on the East Coast. She's the wife of the filmmaker who made the film that I'm going to show you. Excerpts from three films that Clifford West made about Rolf Nesch. So enjoy what you're going to see. Thanks for watching. When I went to Norway in 1969, there was snow on the ground. I'm not sure when Clifford West came to make his film. It must have been a few months after, or maybe it was the autumn before. Rolf had an injury early in life and it left his left side slightly paralyzed so his left hand is only good for holding things but his right hand he can do quite a lot. He has a farmer friend from down the road, Engebert, who would come up and help him. He had all kinds of metal, a lot of copper, sheets of heavy zinc, soldering iron, and uh, Engelbert would hold the solder and uh, they would build the plate together. Rolf Nesch discovered the process of building up plates somewhat by accident. The story is that he unintentionally left a plate of zinc in the acid overnight. When he came back to the workshop, there were holes. The acid had eaten holes in the plate. He went ahead and printed it anyway. His teacher was Kirchner, one of the German expressionists. So they're very much into experimenting with graphics. Rolf didn't have any problem ventilating his studio with the acid fumes and everything around. He just went outside. I'll never forget how he sent me outside to do my etching in the snow. Sometimes he'd pour the acid straight out of the can or the bottle. It would really fume up. Inside the studio, he had a table that was just covered with bags of dry pigment and bottles of oil, mostly raw linseed oil. He'd arrange all these places, uh, pieces of the plate on the background, on the uh, backing sheet, which was usually a piece of zinc. And he'd arrange them around. Generally, he had a composition in mind, but he said one time that the reason he liked the variations in his prints was that it was less machine-like. He said, I'm not a machine. And so all his prints are different.
This is a view of the plate on the press bed. He used a paper from Holland made by the Dutch Van Gelder Zonen Company. It was really a heavy paper, unlike anything I'd ever seen, actually. It had the look and feel of blotter paper, and uh, it was kind of the secret as to why the plate didn't cut holes in the felt blankets. Those sharp-edged little pieces of metal would cut through most papers, but this Dutch Van Gelder Zonen paper was uh, as tough as leather from the way it was, from the fibers, I guess, and uh, it wouldn't cut through. When I got back to the United States, I couldn't continue printing this, this method be until I got the Dutch Van Gelder Zonen paper. He had a big art commission in Oslo, and I think that commission gave him the money he needed to buy this farm in the middle of Norway. Ranhild Hald and Rolf got married, I think in the 50s. She's an actress. I think that she was best known for her part in a play called The Mad Woman of Chaillot. They were so hospitable to Linda and I when we were there. So glad to see us. I think it was because it gets kind of lonely up there and we were a young couple. Some years later, they established a museum in the town of Ol, down in the Hallingdal Valley below. I think it's still there. This is kind of a little uh, display of Randhild's uh, theater pictures from her plays. She was quite a big thing in Oslo. 